In this video we are going to be replacing a broken e-stop lanyard on a mobile crusher. An e-stop is an emergency stop button or cable mounted on the side of the machine in case you need to stop the machine quickly while away from the control cabinet. We will look at how to wire one up and set up the trip tension. Even though the e-stop was covered by a guard, it was hit by a bunch of rocks and completely destroyed the old e-stop and cable. To disconnect the e-stop, you need to remove the front cover and undo the screws that hold the wire in place. Pay attention which way the e-stop was wired. There should be a diagram next to the wires explaining the functions. If not, you can either ohm out the two connectors or check the electrical schematic to see how your system operates. On this new Allen Bradley type e-stop, there are three options on where your harness can connect. As I was saying, there's two ways your e-stop will be wired, normally closed, which is the first two from the left, number 12 and 11, and 22 and 21. You can see by the drawings beside the numbers, it is a closed circuit. This means when the e-stop is activated, it will break the e-stop circuit, which will shut down the machine. The other connectors, 34 and 33, 44 and 43, they are normally open meaning when the e-stop is activated it will connect the e-stop circuit which in some setups will shut down the machine or belt. This machine only uses a normally closed circuit with its e-stops so we will be connecting our wires to 12 and 11. A lot of machines use a closed e-stop circuit because in an event that the wire harness is broken or cut the machine will shut down and you won't be able to start the machine until you fix the wire harness. This stops you running the machine with a disabled e-stop system. It doesn't matter which way you connect the wires as long as you connect them on the same switching circuit like 11 and 12 which I'm using. I put the wire harness on the back of the e-stop like the old e-stop was but it doesn't fit so I'm changing it over to underneath. The white round cam with two holes in it on the back of the yellow plate has to line up with the prongs on the e-stop. This is part of the manual detent that allows you to reset it from the outside. The cam moves freely to allow you to put it in the correct position. In the box we also have eyelets used to mount to the end of the lock line, so we'll put them on first. Pretty simple, just a nut and washer on one side and a nut and washer on the other side to hold it in. Always point the P part of it towards the e-stop so it can't be turned. Next we have the cable grippers. These are super easy to mount. You just push the cable in from one side and it's got a gripping uh, gear in there that doesn't allow the cable to come back out. And you just push it through till you've got about an inch sticking out and then thread it part down into the little yellow hole. Next we have the rope tensioner. Um, you just feed your line straight through there and then tension it up with an allen key that comes with it. These things are super easy to use as well because you don't have to try and work out how much rope you need and try and compensate a spring which is on some systems. They'll have a spring that takes up the tension because the e-stop actually needs to be pulled off off the stop position by the rope tension and this little device here just allows you to set it without having to worry about an exact amount. You don't have to pull the cover off to, to put, thread the wire through. Uh, I just did that so you can see what's going on. Uh, pull the yellow cap off this one just so you can see there's a little gear there that you push down and it clamps onto the wire and once it gets pulled backwards it just pulls down itself and it can't come out. I just twist it around with a pair of pliers and put it straight in the hole. Now we just hook our other end on to the e-stop and we just need to tension up the rope tensioner. Uh, this one just takes a 5mm allen key and it can take up to 300 mil slack out of the line which is really good so all you need to do is wind it up until you move the e-stop off its detent and then you try and manually set it 
with that blue tab. You can see there's too much slack in the line still and I can't set the e-stop in the run position so I need to adjust the line up a bit more. I like to pull on the cable out by hand and then push the blue tab into the run position then I let the cable go and see if it will stay there. You want the lanyard to have some resistance to vibration or else the slightest bump will shut the entire machine down. You should be able to bounce the cable a little bit and not set it off but a sharp pull on the line should definitely activate the e-stop. On machines like fixed clamp they are really easy to set the tension but this machine bounces around a lot crushing rock so I've got to set this one where it has the most resistance to movement. A bit of playing with it and you'll get it to work right. And that's how to wire up and set tension on an e-stop with a lifeline or lanyard. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button.